Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms. I'm Dan. Continuing our 10 Interesting Facts series, today we're going to look at the colorful, fearless, and badass Mandalorian, Sabine Wren. In our previous videos in this series, we looked at 10 interesting facts about Kanan Jarrus and Harrison Dula, so make sure to check those out if you haven't already. First, let's give a quick introduction on who Sabine Wren is. Sabine Wren was a human female from the planet Mandalore. Born during the waning years of the Galactic Republic in 21 BBY, Sabine would go on to become a vital member of the Ghost Crew as well as the burgeoning Rebel Alliance. Her cunning, grit, determination, and knowledge of weapons, explosives, and technology helped aid the Ghost Crew and Rebellion in the liberation of Lothal as well as in the toppling of the Galactic Empire. As with several other characters from Star Wars Rebels, Sabine quickly became a character that I really enjoyed and appreciated. She's a total badass. So here are 10 interesting facts about Sabine Wren. Number 1. Sabine was once a cadet at the Imperial Academy on Mandalore. As a youth, Sabine believed in the Empire and joined the Imperial Academy on Mandalore. During her time as a cadet, Sabine studied the tactics used by the Mandalorian Protector's leader, Fen Rao, during his time fighting in the Clone Wars, as well as the tactics used by the Twi'lek Resistance leader, Cham Syndulla, Hera Syndulla's father. Putting her technical skills to use, Sabine would go on to create a new arc pulse generator, a super weapon for the Empire that she named the Duchess, after the late Duchess Satine of Mandalore. This weapon was able to target Beskar alloy used in creating Mandalorian armor, which resulted in eviscerating the being that was wearing the armor. Once Sabine learned how this weapon was going to be used against her people, she was racked with guilt for creating it, as Mandalorian armor is viewed as sacrosanct amongst Mandalorians. Sabine then decided to leave the Imperial Academy and was able to escape with the help from her friend, Ketsu Onyo. Before Sabine left Mandalore, she successfully destroyed the Duchess and believed that would be the end of the Empire using the weapon against Mandalorians, or so she thought. Years later, however, the Empire was able to use the research Sabine had conducted and built another arc pulse generator, which was eventually used against her fellow Mandalorians. Sabine and the Ghost crew were able to successfully destroy the weapon and defeated several Mandalorians that supported the Empire in the process. Number 2. Sabine was estranged from her biological family. After Sabine began to see the true nature of the Empire and learned of their intent to use the Duchess against the people of Mandalore, she began to speak out against the Empire and denounce them. This angered Sabine's family who had begun to view Sabine as a traitor. Sabine's actions resulted in serious consequences for Clan Wren and Sabine's family. Sabine's father, Ulrich Wren, became a hostage of Viceroy Gar Saxon, the Emperor's Hand and the Imperial Puppet Ruler of Mandalore. Sabine's mother, Ursa Wren, and the matriarch of Clan Wren of House Vizsla was forced to prove her and her clan's fealty to the Empire. Additionally, her brother Tristan was forced to serve in Gar Saxon's Imperial Super Commandos just so that Sabine's family could remain in Saxon's favor. Because of this, Sabine's family cast her out and shunned her to further prove their loyalty to the Empire. Number 3. Sabine was once a bounty hunter that worked with Ketsu Onyo. Once Ketsu helped Sabine escape the Imperial Academy on Mandalore, they began working together as bounty hunters as a way to earn credits. The two became very close and had dreams of one day working for the crime syndicate Black Sun. However, their plans soon fell apart when Ketsu got greedy and left Sabine for dead after a mission they were on went bad. Sabine then stopped working as a bounty hunter, while Ketsu continued in the trade and was able to eventually work for Black Sun. Years later, Sabine and Ketsu would meet as somewhat adversaries when Sabine and Ezra Bridger were on a mission to obtain and deliver a gonk droid to Bail Organa, as the gonk droid had information vital to the rebellion cause. After some time had passed and Sabine and Ketsu were able to restore their friendship, Ketsu Ketsu would go on to assist the Ghost Crew and the Rebellion in various missions, as well as in liberating Lothal and driving the Imperial Presence from the planet. Number 4. Sabine was only 16 years old in the first season of Rebels. We're not exactly sure how Sabine crossed paths with the Ghost Crew, but she joined Harrison Dula, Kanan Jarrus, and Garaz Eberelios at a fairly young age. Sabine was born in 21 BBY, and with the first season of Star Wars Rebels taking place between the years of 5 BBY and 4 BBY, that would have made Sabine roughly 16 years old during the first season, maybe 17 by the end of the season. Although the Ghost Crew weren't her biological family, Family, their kinship and camaraderie created a welcoming environment for a teenager during a period in her life that was quite tumultuous. Imagine being 16 years old, living with people who were previously complete strangers, being estranged from your biological family, and also fighting in a rebellion against a tyrannical and fascist government? Damn man, kinda wild to think about. 
Number 5. Sabine is really into art. Throughout Star Wars Rebels, we see Sabine regularly express her artistic side. Sabine's skills as an artist were on display on numerous occasions throughout the show, including the mural she painted of Zeb and Ezra in their cabin, the time she painted the outside of a stolen tie, as well as the portrait of the ghost crew she painted that could be seen in the series finale. Additionally, Sabine has demonstrated her knowledge of art and other artists on several occasions. In the Season 1 episode, Idiot's Array, she and Lando discussed the protest art of Janer of Bith and how they influenced her work. Sabine's knowledge of art was also utilized by the Imperial Minister Varys Hayden in the Season 4 episode A World Between Worlds. Minister Hayden, who served as an advisor to Emperor Palpatine, forced Sabine to assist him in decoding the painting of the Mortis Gods that adorn the wall of the Jedi Temple on Lothal, hoping to unlock the secrets to opening the portal to the World Between Worlds. Furthermore, over the course of the four seasons of the show, Sabine's hair color and armor change multiple times, reflecting her artistic side. Number 6. Sabine's rising phoenix tag became the Rebel Alliance symbol. As an avid artist, Sabine liked to leave her tag or personal signature whenever the opportunity arose, which was an image of a phoenix. As time passed, Sabine and the Ghost crew eventually found themselves joining forces with other Rebel cells that were unifying together to form the burgeoning Rebel Alliance. Under command of Jun Sato, Sabine and the Ghost crew became part of Phoenix Squadron. As time went on, and the Alliance was publicly and formally declared with the declaration Declaration of the Rebel Alliance and the Declaration of Rebellion, the Rebel Alliance needed a symbol that could be used to represent them. Thus, the Rebel Alliance Starbird, as it would be called, was created. It was created by combining Sabine's personal signature and the three-pronged symbol that was used by Saw Gerrera. Additionally, Sabine's artwork was also used to create recruitment posters, such as the Fly for Freedom recruitment poster, which was originally a gift that Sabine made for Hera following her promotion to Phoenix Leader. The artwork caught the attention of Rebel leader Mon Mothma, who thought it perfectly exemplified the tenacity and spirit of Rebellion pilots. Number 7 Sabine helped a young Wedge Antilles defect from the Sky Strike Academy. Upon obtaining information from one of the Rebel Alliance's fulcrum agents that Imperial cadets at the Sky Strike Academy on Montrose were planning to defect to the Rebellion, Hera assigned Sabine with the mission to help the cadets escape the Imperial Academy. After preparations were made, Sabine was able to infiltrate the Academy, where she befriended Wedge and two other pilots, before making plans to help the three pilots escape. As Sabine began to formulate a strategy to extract Wedge and the other pilots, the Imperials' Governor Orinda Price and the Imperial Security Bureau agent Callus reported to the Academy after ISB had information that several Imperial cadets were planning to defect to the Rebellion. Hoping to smoke out Sabine and the cadets looking to defect, Governor Price set a trap for the cadets during a training mission in space. As Sabine and the three cadets were getting ready to escape, Governor Price detached the TIE Solar collectors, leaving the ties floating in space. Price then had one of the cadets killed before planning to interrogate and torture Sabine, Wedge, and the other cadet. The trio were soon able to evade torture and imprisonment by the hands of Governor Price and Agent Callus, and fled the academy in a tie bomber, eventually being rescued by Kanan, Ezra, and Chopper. Number 8. Sabine's armor is over 500 years old. Few things in Mandalorian culture are as sacred as the armor that adorns their bodies. The same can be said for Sabine's armor, which is at least 500 years old. Created in roughly 501 BBY, Sabine's armor was forged by her ancestors and then passed down from generation to generation. Once Sabine inherited her armor, she reforged it to better fit her and did so again sometime after the liberation of Lothal. Showcasing her artistic abilities and colorful personality, Sabine's armor was painted various colors over the years and changed with pretty much each new season of Star Wars Rebels. Number 9. Sabine wielded the Darksaber for a short period. Much like her armor, Sabine also came into possession of another item that was ancient and revered by Mandalorians, the Darksaber. The Darksaber was an ancient and unique black-bladed lightsaber created by Tar Vizsla, who was the first Mandalorian to ever be inducted into the Jedi Order. The Darksaber was kept in the Jedi Temple after Tar Vizsla's death, but was reclaimed by members of House Vizsla, who stole the saber in a conflict with the Jedi during the fall of the Old Republic in roughly 1019 BBY. From that point on, the Darksaber was passed down throughout the generations of House Vizsla. By the time of the Clone Wars, Pre Vizsla, leader of both House Vizsla and Death Watch, possessed the saber before losing it to Maul. Sabine acquired the 
Darksaber in two BBY after she, Kanan, and Ezra ventured to Dathomir. Sabine would then train with Ezra and Kanan on how to properly wield the saber before returning to Mandalore with the hopes of recruiting her mother and Clan Wren to the Rebellion. Sabine would eventually go on to pass the Darksaber to Bo-Katan Kryze in an attempt to unify the people of Mandalore. Years later, the Darksaber would reappear, this time in the hands of the Imperial Moff Gideon, after he encountered Din Djarin on Navarro in 9 ABY. Number 10. Sabine's name is a reference to the Sabine women of the Roman Empire. When it came to creating names for the characters that would make up Star Wars Rebels, the show's creators, Dave Filoni, Simon Kinberg, and Carrie Beck, drew from historical and biblical figures for inspiration. In the case of Sabine, her name comes from the Sabine women of the Roman Empire. The Sabine women are most notably known for what's referred to as the Rape of the Sabine Women or the Abduction of the Sabine Women, which was an incident in Roman mythology where the men of the city of Rome committed a mass abduction of young women from other cities in the region to either bolster the number of women within Rome or for the men of Rome to fulfill their sexual desires, depending upon the historical source. The rape of the Sabine women has been a common subject for artists and sculptors throughout history, especially during the Renaissance and post-Renaissance eras. And there you have it. Those are 10 interesting facts about the Mandalorian badass Sabine Wren. But what do you guys think about some of the facts we've discussed? What are some of your favorite Sabine facts or moments? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.